Ongoing Sustainability series. Uh, my name is Heath and I'm the Adult Services Librarian at Morrill Memorial Library. And I'd like to take a moment to thank our program partners, Progress Norwood and Together Yes, for helping to organize and run the series. And Katie Neil Rizzo um, has a, a quick note for us. Hi, I'm Katie Neil Rizzo from Progress Norwood. I just wanted to um, give you a heads up uh, of a couple events we have coming up next month, April. Uh, we will have two talks um, during the week before um, the weeks leading up to Earth Day. Um, we're going to have one talk with the um, Neponset River Watershed Association about, about rain gardens. And then we'll also be having a um, talk with the Sustainability Commission um, leading up to Earth Day on um, rainwater. So um, those are two programs to keep an eye out for. And then uh, additionally, Progress Norwood is going to be hosting our annual um, Earth Day cleanup community picnic and fair. And that will be on Sunday, April 24th. And you can um, check our uh, Facebook page for sign up opportunities and times and locations of the cleanups. So that's all I have, but thank you Heath for hosting us. Of course, and thanks Katie. Uh, so just a quick note for everyone before we get started. Um, we do ask that audience members keep their microphones muted unless otherwise prompted. Um, David, our presenter tonight, will occasionally open things up for questions. So once prompted, do feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you have directly. Um, but if you don't have access to a microphone, you can also send your questions to the chat and I can read those. Um, so without further ado, tonight I am pleased to introduce uh, David Ruchero, the energy manager for the town of Norwood. So David, welcome. Thank you, Heath, and thank you, Katie, and um, thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, I hope that this is going to be the first of many conversations um, we all have, you know, with, with each other um, about energy efficiency. There's a lot happening in the world, a lot happening in the country, the state, and uh, we'll bring it real close to home. A lot is happening in Norwood. Um, and I say that, you know, I want to have a lot of conversations with each other. I have many conversations now, uh, as, as well as being the uh, municipal energy manager for the town. Um, I'm also a homeowner, so I'm interested in making my home more efficient. I talk to people about that. Um, I sit on the town meeting, so there's always, you know, referendums and uh, warrant items that require, you know, conversations about how to invest dollars to make uh, our building is more efficient, um, which is just a reminder to um, don't forget to vote uh, in April for the uh, new middle school because there's a lot of energy savings there. <clears throat> uh, and I also sit on the Sustainability Commission, and we're always talking about energy there. In fact, we have an energy subcommittee. We have five subcommittees and a shameless plug here if you're at all interested uh, in any form of sustainability. If you haven't already read the Norwood Sustainability Plan, it is available on the town website. Uh, and we're looking for uh, volunteers to help staff the subcommittees. And we actually have a few open seats on the commission. Um, so, you know, just reach out to myself or Joe Collins at the town hall, and we can answer your questions. So, so the conversations that I typically have and that I'll be focused on tonight is um, how do I save energy? How do I save money? Or how do I save carbon, carbon emissions? Those are the three driving forces. Those are the three conversations. And in fact, energy conversations have been going on in the world for almost 400 years, um, if you can believe that. I'm trying to figure out how exactly to move this slide. Here we go. Um, as I'm sure all of you know, Norwood has the Neponset River running right through it. And recently I found this very interesting map. Uh, it's a map of the mills that existed uh, on the Neponset River uh, in 1876. Um, and my contention is, if we read the little uh, blurb below, that Norwood was founded by people searching for more efficient energy sources. Um, everyone knows Morse Street and Morse House. Um, Ezra Morse um, is often quoted as having started the first mill in Norwood. 
Um, he was asked to uh, abandon a mill in Dedham on Maverick Street uh, on what was what is now uh, Muller Brook. And in lieu of abandoning that um, piece of property, he was given 40 acres in, uh, in Norwood, which was then known as Tyot. Um, and he decided to open up a new mill. And the last line on this little blurb here uh, says that he opened it up next to a sawmill, which had been there since 1644. And again, uh, horsepower, manpower, not as efficient as uh, water power or mill power. So for close to 400 years, um, no one has been interested in energy efficiency, at least two people that we know of, Ezra Moss and whoever owned that sawmill. And today, if you fast forward three, 400 years, there are still two businesses in Norwood that are interested or are promoting energy efficiency. And that would be Norwood Municipal Light and National Grid through their mass safe program. So one supplies electricity, the other supplies uh, natural gas, and that's what we're going to get into tonight. Um, so both, how both utilities provide those services and what they're doing to change the face of energy consumption through efficiency. Um, and the interesting thing is that um, in the last few years and definitely in the last few months, there's been a major transformation of energy programs. Uh, and a lot of that is due to, to climate change concerns and then climate related legislation. We'll touch on that a little as well. Um, so let's talk about the agenda. Um, <clears throat> what I really want to review tonight, um, these bullet points, of course, you know, high level energy use in the town, uh, the country and the state, the three year efficiency plan, which most utility companies in the state uh, need to adhere to, and then the efficiency programs that um, that both Norwood Light and MassSave uh, provide. Uh, and then an incentive comparison. The, um, I guess one of the themes that I really want to emphasize tonight and the dialogue that we have to have is that Norwood Light is not a, um, a regulated utility company. It's, it's a municipal owned utility company. It is not an investor owned utility company. So the three year plan that I referenced and we'll quickly cover tonight um, lays down some pretty strict uh, laws and regulations and guidelines. Um, and you can find yourself in a situation, if, such as myself, I have a natural gas account uh, with uh, National Grid, and I have an electric account with Norwood Light. Both are going to offer incentives for the same um, you know, efficiency upgrade. Sometimes Norwood Light might be better uh, sometimes National Grid's incentives and program might be better. Uh, sometimes you might not qualify for, uh, for a National Grid program. So having, uh, having some way to figure all that out is, is really what this is about tonight. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think what's next here. If we're going to take a look at high level energy use, just to get everyone comfortable with what we're talking about and some of the terms. Um, I'm going to go to really just a high level look at the amount of energy that's consumed in the US, then in Massachusetts, and then in Norwood. Uh, and you can look at the sectors that most people report out. The residential sector, we live in homes. The commercial sector, where we work. Uh, the industrial sector, you know, production. Uh, of goods, and then the transportation sector. And it's not, these numbers um, are tough to understand. If you're looking at what is 97,633 trillion BTUs, how much energy is that? Um, most of you probably remember high school science, BTU um, can be equated as to a single match, enough heat or enough energy to raise one pound of water, one degree, Fahrenheit. Um, so there you go. How many degrees Fahrenheit is the U.S. consuming? Well, this 97 trillion BTUs is equivalent to about 17 billion barrels of crude oil. Uh, and if you look at Massachusetts, that's equivalent to about 250 million 
and in Norwood, about 782,000. So by order of magnitude, Massachusetts consumes about one and a half percent uh, of the total energy consumed in those four sectors for the United States. And Norwood consumes about 0.3%, uh, not, excuse me, 0.3%, not 3%. So um, barely 1%, barely one half a percent of all the energy that's consumed in, Mass um, in Massachusetts. So very small amounts. But interestingly, if you look at the sectors, uh, the percentage of energy that's consumed, it's pretty uniform, um, you know, in the residential sector in the 20s, the commercial sector is a little bit higher in Norwood. We do have a large base of, of businesses in the transportation sector. Um, we're about dead on approaching 30%, which is the same across the country and across the state. So when you ask yourself, I have energy efficiency money, I have investments that I want to make, where do I want to make it? You know, I own a home, I own a car. Okay, you can make it as uh, in a residential uh, investment or in a transportation investment. If you own a business, if you own a building, um, you'll know where you might want to spend that money. Most of us are probably looking at the residential sector, um, but you should think about the transportation sector as well. If you look at energy use uh, in two other ways, again, by sector and broke it out to the left, which is what we just looked at, but if you also look at, at it by the amount of uh, um, fuel, the different fuel types, uh, natural gas by far is the dominant fuel in this country, um, in the state and in Norwood. Um, electricity is, isn't even second. It's going to be the transportation sector, uh, petroleum, gasoline, diesel, then electricity. You know, less than 25% of all the energy consumed in Norwood is electricity comes from Norwood Light. So they're not providing even a quarter of our energy. Um, and these, these are pretty solid numbers. I wanna give a shout out to um, the, the, the chairman of the energy subcommittee for uh, the sustainability commission, Heather Mary Matthews, who just completed um, an inventory, a greenhouse gas inventory of all of Norwood's energy use. Um, and from that, you know, we know exactly where uh, the gas, diesel, electric, fuel oil, uh, all those percentages and all those sums are coming from. So, you know, Norwood is, is, is starting to get a handle on uh, the energy sector and, and the emissions sector. Uh, so the, um, the one thing looking here at the right, at the um, electricity, the three-year plan, which we're going to look at next, the focus on the next three years, what utilities and what people should be looking at, um, it leads off with electrification for the most part, or actually it leads off with emissions reduction. And in order to do that, we need to electrify um, our grid, our power source. That 24% needs to grow to um, 74%, 75%. And those uh, bulk numbers need to get a lot smaller as well. So let's dive into the three-year plan and take a look at emissions, um, electrification, and then environmental justice initiatives, which is a big part of the three-year plan. Now, if you're not in the utility industry or the energy efficiency industry, chances are you've never read a 300-page document to the left. Um, they're issued by the DPU, Department of Public Utilities, um, they're compiled and uh, agreed upon by a large number of people uh, up on uh, Beacon Hill. Uh, this is, I don't know if I'm sad or I'm proud to say, this is the seventh three-year plan I've been involved with. I've been involved in the industry for a while now. Um, I'll let you do the math because we will be doing some math tonight. Um, but this year's three-year plan uh, is revolutionary uh, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, $3.94 billion to be spent in the next three years on energy efficiency and energy initiatives, probably triple what's been spent in the last few three-year plans. It's estimated that $9 billion in benefits will be generated. So the creation of new jobs um, is, is primarily the, the one that they're looking at, but new technologies, um, building heat pumps, building, um, you know, 
insulation companies, whatever you can think of for energy efficiency. Um, so pouring $9 billion into the economy of Massachusetts is a very good thing. But really the three goals of this three-year plan are emission savings, electrification, and environmental justice community initiatives. And we're gonna look at each one of those before we actually get into the, uh, you know, what efficiency uh, programs are all about. Uh, and the emission savings are interesting because ever since I've known uh, or been involved in this industry, it's always been save kilowatt hours, save therms, uh, reduce the amount of energy that is comes online from new construction, sometimes by two or three percent per year. They're looking at massive cuts, like 17 percent per year, and they're no longer measuring the three-year plan is no longer saying, well, reduce energy use by X amount of kilowatt hours or X amount of therms. They've normalized it. They're now saying, say BTUs. We can convert any fuel source into BTUs. Um, and we don't care where you're saving that money. We care that the emissions come down quickly. Um, so that's, that's a very different approach. And electrification uh, of that 3.9 billion 814 million of it is uh, earmarked for electrification, which is just switching from fossil fuels to electric systems. I'm gonna cover that. And then environmental justice, community initiatives, 600 million dedicated to that. Environmental justice communities know what is actually a priority environmental justice community, meaning over a third of the residents um, are either uh, low to moderate income, English is a second language, or live in a rental property. Those are the three main criteria. So uh, there's a lot of money that can come this way to know all of them. So let's take a look at each one of these real quick. Um, so greenhouse gas emissions, carbon emissions, CO2. Um, I'm gonna take you back to, uh, to Montreal. The Montreal Protocol, 1987. Climate initiatives, climate agreements, have been in the works for some 35 years, um, and not fast enough, unfortunately, as we seem to be facing you know, more and more harsh weather-related events. Um, but over the course of you know, the last 30 years, there were four major agreements, the Montreal Protocol, the Rio Convention, uh, the Kyoto Protocol, and finally the Paris uh, Agreement, or the Paris Accord, it's sometimes called, um, which was ratified and signed in 2015. All the two nations had uh, agreed to, the, um, to sign uh, a few years ago. Three nations were not involved in it, but that, that number is now every nation in the world has agreed to uh, reduce carbon emissions, uh, at least put into place policies and enact laws which would re reduce carbon emissions. So let's take Massachusetts and see what they had done for carbon laws, or climate change laws. And there actually have been two. There's a third in development. Um, the Global Warming Solution Act came out in 2008, sort of a roadmap, sort of a uh, first effort. But in um, 2021, uh, Massachusetts did adopt what is known as the Massachusetts 2015 Decarbonization Roadmap. Um, it requires the energy sector, the utilities, the state to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030, uh, and then reduce them by 85% by 2050. Um, and that's against a, uh, a 1990 baseline. I put those numbers in red because they're subject to change. Um, and I also put them in red to highlight the fact that the three-year plan we just looked at, um, and it highlights electrification is the, um, is, is, is what it's based on. We've got to meet these goals. So we enacted the law, we're gonna hold the utilities who provide so much of the energy uh, to the Commonwealth to reduce those. So let's take a look at electrification. Um, I guess I see some numbers coming up. So Keith, uh, if there are any questions, if we wanna open it up before we jump into electrification, um, let, you know, why don't you ask the, the group if they do have any questions. Yeah, so anyone with any questions should feel free to unmute yourself uh, and go ahead and ask. We do have one question in the chat, which I can read off. Um, so this person says, we heat with oil. 
we get electricity from the town of Norwood. Is there a program where we can get the house insulated like what the gas company offers? There, there is, and we're going to cover that um, in a few uh, a few slides, and we can talk about that at length. Uh, the good news is, if electrification, which we're looking at right now, what a great segue! Um, oil and gas heating systems, if you convert them to heat pumps, that's electrification. Uh, water heating systems, oil or gas related, or even electric, just electric resistance. If you convert to heat pumps, that's electrification. Same with electric resistance heat in your home, whether it's baseboard heat for um, space heating or for hot water heating. If you convert to heat pumps, that's an electrification. And for the first time in um, God, in the history of, of, of Massachusetts and utility programs, gas companies can use their money that they've collected through efficiency programs and use them to install electric systems. And there is funding available for oil-based homes to electrify and to use, I'm not sure if it's mass save money, but it's definitely going to be DOER money. Um, so there are plenty of programs that can help anyone in Norwood, and again, Norwood is unique in that we have uh, an electric municipality that doesn't uh, adhere to or need to adhere to the three-year plan. They have their own efficiency programs, um, and then we have um, natural uh, natural gas or, or, or um, coming into the to the community, paying into Mass Save, and those people can take advantage of all of those programs. So th this is a, I would say, an issue that's uh, that's under discussion with the state and with uh, with Norwood Light, um, because if you have, I'll throw this out there right now. If you have an electric, uh, let's say, a, a gas furnace, you want to replace it and put in a heat pump. You could petition National Grid for up to ten thousand dollars in uh, funding to help pay for that system. Well, Norwood Light also has um, a heat pump conversion um, program where you can get up to $6,000. What's to stop you from getting $16,000? Um, it's not a good thing. You could rip through a lot of money uh, that's meant for more people. Um, there's a problem with double dipping, claiming energy savings that aren't there. So there are discussions that, that I'm uh, having with Norwood Light on how best to, to, to invest the town's money. It's the ratepayers' money. And we're also having them with the state saying, you know, how do we deal with this? Um, so I hope that answered it in part. There, there are plenty of programs out there. Um, we do have a solution to how to solve that. That's the next slide. So I'm just gonna, you know, address a few more things on electrification. And again, it's coming off those fossil fuel systems. It's it's growing that pie chart from the 24% electricity uh, to the 74, 76% electricity use, getting rid of uh, dirty fuels, uh, carbon emitting fuels, and, and using heat pump technology, which typically is about three times as efficient as uh, fossil fuel based systems. Um, the other component to electrification is to produce more clean energy. Um, and while you see efficiency measures um, and energy use, uh, statistics and a lot of news about that, what you don't see unless you're really looking for it is there's a tremendous amount of development of offshore wind going on um, in the Northeast right now. A lot of sale of uh, or leasing of properties, a great amount of um, business and, and money being thrown at uh, clean energy and uh, wind turbines off the coast. So can, you can imagine using a third less energy and then using clean energy, there's no carbon to pollute the air. That's electrification, that's the carbon plan. It, so it is a win-win scenario. You save energy, you save carbon, and you should, you could save money. That really depends on how much fossil fuel you're using, what you're paying for it. And if you live in Norwood, where our electric rates are about 25% lower than everyone else's in the state, uh, 
it's great to use electricity because it's pretty cheap. So um, <clears throat> let's see a question here real quick. Does replacing central AC units with heat pumps, I'm assuming, count? Uh, yes, you can, there are incentives to, um, to update, perhaps not as rich as $10,000 for a whole house system, um, but I can direct you to someone who can answer that question. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to the next slide, assuming I know how to use this. So the three points that we were going to cover, one was uh, emissions, the other was um, electrification, and now environmental justice um, blocks. There are seven block groups in Norwood. You can see the outline to the right here of the town of Norwood. Um, and there's a large yellow patch to the left, which is South Norwood. Um, and in the center of town, you see um, some green and yellow. Um, if you go onto the map, and I've provided the link down here, it's a great interactive link. You can just click on any one of these blocks and it will give you a wealth of information about why it qualifies as, as environmental uh, justice uh, grouping. Uh, whether the income level is low, whether the rent uh, proportion of renters is high, or whether English is a second language is, is, is the dominant uh, statistic there. But the good news is that because there's been a heavy emphasis on um, environmental justice in this three-year plan, it is the most underserved segment in energy efficiency in the energy efficiency world are renters and uh, and English as a second language um, residents. So they're trying to turn that tide. Uh, low income people spend a disproportionate amount of their money uh, heating their homes and buying energy. So the state hopes to, to change that to level the playing field. Now, Norwood is a priority community uh, or a priority environmental justice block community. Um, qualified for a program, or at least to submit an application to become a Mass Aid Community First Partner. Uh, the Community First Partnership Program um, awards money to towns to do direct outreach. Um, so Norwood submitted an application and the Sustainability Commission took the lead. Uh, I rallied um, two other communities. I do serve uh, as the energy manager for Norwood, Sharon and Walpole. So it was pretty easy to go into the town planners and the town hall and say, this is no cost to anyone. It's just money coming into the, uh, to the communities. Um, and with a little bit of paperwork and a little bit of arm twisting, uh, we received Team Norwood, as it's known now, uh, a three-year $105,000 award from the Mass Safe program. And with that money, we're able to hire an energy advocate. I'm not going to be the energy advocate. I have enough on my plate. So we're bringing someone in. We start interviews tomorrow. Uh, we have a few um, next week, and we hope to have someone in place by April 1st. And now the energy advocate in this program um, will help connect ratepayers with efficiency programs and ratepayers with financial services, um, and also answer or direct or redirect any technical questions you may have. If I'm not answering the questions uh, or getting around to giving you a sufficient answer tonight, um, if you wait a few weeks, we will have someone in place who will be paid to do just that. Um, so this is really an exciting uh, opportunity for Norwood. It's only we received one of 18 um, partnerships uh, and there's, there's hope that this will grow. We actually went in on a very low bid saying, you know, we, we think we'll get about 300 units of, um, I guess, efficiency uh, done per year. So a unit might be a, a business changing their lighting, a homeowner undergoing an energy audit uh, or upgrading to uh, their heating system. So every time that there is an audit or some energy efficiency work done, no one gets credit. Um, I think we're 350 units and we get a thousand per unit so we get 35,000 per year we could actually get up to 65,000 per year so if you folks have questions um, the energy advocate is going to be the person you want to talk to and there's a lot of support going on I know for the first few months this person will be going through a tremendous amount of training um, 
both in, in tracking um, their outreach efforts, how to you know best communicate with uh, with people through social media, dealing with community-based organizations. So this is really the, the first of many efforts that, um, or, or public-facing efforts where you'll hear the, about the Community First Partnership Program. Um, and even Norwood Light, who isn't part of uh, the Mass Safe Program, stepped right up and said, we really wanna be a part of this. Uh, and they've been um, quite helpful, um, providing information and um, you know, looking to know the next steps that we'll be taking and whether we can uh, partner with them. So it's an exciting opportunity for Norwood. It's an exciting opportunity for Norfolk County. Uh, so for the person who asked, hey, I've got an oil burner and can I participate in this, uh, in a you know, weatherization program? Um, yeah, probably the best thing to do is, is wait until April where we're gonna have a hotline go live, we're gonna have a website go live and hopefully we're gonna have someone that's staffing it um, and they can answer your questions. So. That's an exciting time. I'm going to switch to um, reviewing some efficiency programs now. So, uh, and I'm going to do this real quick. This is pretty tough. Actually, I'm going to rifle through the slides real quick. I'll go back to them, but Norwood has a handful of programs, uh, and MassAid has, excuse me, so many programs, you can't list them all. When you go onto the MassSafe website, you see these eight different blocks. You can then click onto one of them and you can get lost in hours and hours of forms and program designs. Um, so what I hope to do tonight is just cover some of the higher level program uh, information. I'm gonna provide us uh, an analysis of five different programs between Norwood Light and Mass Save, um, and then talk a little bit about uh, you know, next steps, what we can do, and some resources that we have. So as far as efficiency programs from Norwood Light, if, if you go back to some of the first slides when we talked about the various sectors, residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors, this is how I've grouped them. And this is how you'll find them on Mass Save. You can get an energy audit through anyone in, in Norwood can get an energy audit. Uh, it'll be free. It's administered through Energy New England, who runs all of Norwood Lights programs. Um, you can also get one through Mass Save as well. Uh, but any ratepayer in Mass uh, in Norwood, call them up. They'll come out to your house. They'll start assessing um, the problems that you have and some of the solutions. You can also get weatherization rebates. So once they do the audit, they'll say, hey, you know, your, your house is leaky. You should air seal it. You should put more insulation in the attic and the walls. And no one will pay up to $500. There are appliance rebates. More importantly, uh, there are air source heat pump rebates. Um, this is a program that is run by a company called Boat Energy Management. Um, and they're really a building science firm. They will do uh, soup to nuts audit. They'll look at your utility bills. They will uh, really take a hard look at, at how you should invest your money. Now, the replacement uh, or new installation costs for air source heat pumps, and the person asked, hey, I have AC, can I put in a heat pump? Sure, you can get uh, through Norwood Light $200 per ton, up to $6,000, depending on uh, how big a system it is. If you look at Mass Save, that's a, a if that's a little less than what Mass Save gives, and that's a $10,000. But if you look at where Norwood Light was last year, they offered up to $1,000 for heat pump installations. And Mass Save offered about $1,500, sometimes $3,000. So incentives have tripled, sometimes quadrupled for this one technology. We do have a slide on heat pumps, so you'll get a little primer on that as well. So this is a huge undertaking uh, by Norwood Light, and, and I applaud them. Um, sadly, uh, I put in heat pumps in my house just before they raised the, uh, the incentive level. And uh, as much as I pleaded with them uh, to give me the extra $5,000, utility programs don't work that way. So, so those are the residential programs. You have commercial programs as well. Uh, you can get energy audits. There are commercial lighting. Uh, rebates and Norwood Light is unique 
and that they offer transportation rebates. Um, think about it. We saw that 27% of the town's energy, the state's energy, um, is consumed by the transportation sector. And if you want to decarbonize, Norwood Light is giving you up to, you know, $2,500 to buy a battery operated electric vehicle, uh, $1,500 for a plug in hybrid. That's rather generous. That's unheard of. They're also um, offering rebates on residential charges. You could spend days charging it with a, an extension cord coming out of your house. But if you put in a level two charger, uh, you spend a few hours doing that. So these are very progressive um, offerings from Norwood Light. Uh, and it's good business for the town because the more we change our, uh, our fuel mix from fossil fuel to electricity, the more revenues that are coming into the town. And we have better control over that. Um, we could insist, hey, we want a greener grid. Can you buy more renewable energy? Um, hey, we want more, let's say, you know, more electric vehicle incentives. We want more whatever. We just petition town hall. Um, it, and that's how we can get change to occur. So the transportation sector that Norwood Light is serving is huge. And I know a lot of people that have taken part of that. And I encourage you if, you, if you have some money, if you need a new vehicle, EVs are going to be the norm within uh, five years. Within 10 years, they're talking about legislating um, that, that you can't sell um, a, a gasoline powered car. So that's coming. Norwood's out ahead of it. That's a good thing. Also, Norwood is putting in four public charging stations, public access charging stations for EVs. We just won a number of grants from uh, Mass DEP to the tune of about $160,000. So you should be seeing um, charging stations pop up at the town hall, at the post office, at the Talbot lot, and at uh, the airport. So that's in addition to the one charging station that is at the uh, Norwood Light headquarters. So, you know, drive, um, I guess drive electric is uh, the slogan at Norwood Light. The other interesting thing that you folks might not be uh, too familiar with are demand response programs. Um, and these are paying people, uh, programs that pay people to shed load, to turn off hot water heaters, not to charge your car uh, when there's a high demand for electricity. Uh, and that's important if, if one, if you want to save money, because if you're going to consume a lot of energy during a peak response period or a peak demand period, your electric rates are going to go up. Your base electric rates will go up. Also, the amount of carbon going into the air because they start bringing on older, inefficient um, generators. Um, so if you're really concerned about saving money, and can save uh, carbon, participate in the peak demand program. They're great. And it, it's not a lot of money. You look at $4 a month, you know, I have that on my hot water heater, but I'll take it $48, go up to Lewis's, have dinner, pay all on Norwood Light. Thank you very much. Uh, and the last program that uh, Norwood Light promotes is uh, their solar program. Again, innovative in the fact that a municipal light department is offering $1.20 per watt. Uh, that's not uh, supplemented by the state in any way. This is on their own. Um, and I'm sorry that Katie uh, jumped off. Uh, she's always asking me about solar, and I'm always saying efficiency first. So if a uh, few folks ever want to talk about solar, that's going to be another uh, sustainability series presentation. Solar is all about producing energy, not about saving energy. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. So I'm gonna rifle through the last few slides here and then open it up to questions um, questions and answers. Uh, the Mass Save programs, again, we saw this slide real quick. Um, it's not as detailed as what we saw in Norwood, but if you do click on, hey, what about upgrading clean heat and cooling? It's gonna be all about heat pumps. Um, what about appliances uh, or home evaluation and weatherization? So everything that you just saw with the exception of transportation, you will find here. Um, you'll find a few more other things as well. Um, Norwood doesn't have a um, in a new construction or renovation program. So, but if you're building new or adding additions, you know, add heat pumps. Again, this is the way to go. Look at Mouse Save or 
call our new energy advocate once they're in place. What I will do is, and I, and I did this uh, today, just to take a quick look at um, four specific incentive programs and comparing Norwood Light to Mass Safe. I'm gonna take a sip of water here. Home energy assessments, of course, are free. Just a way of getting in the door. Um, there are some free offerings uh, that Norwood Light will give you, power strips, shower heads, some low, um, really low tech, but effective um, energy saving devices. It's the same package that Mass Save gives you. So all in all, um, you know, if you qualify for Mass Save, do that. If you just want to stick local, you know, call the folks at Energy New England, log on to the, the Norwood Light webpage, and you can sign up for an assessment. I've given you links and a resource page at the very end. So hopefully uh, Katie can send this out to you. For weatherization, you know, once you have a home energy assessment, someone will tell you, uh, you need more insulation in your attic, you need air sailing in your basement. Norwood Light will pay up to $500 for the work. Now save 75% off of approved insulation measures. So I'm not sure what that value is, but it's probably $500 at a minimum uh, and probably a bit more. We already talked a bit about heat pumps. Uh, Norwood Light is offering up to $6,000, which is a huge jump in what they were offering last year. Uh, now save almost tripled their incentives up to $10,000. And that is up to $10,000, depending on the tonnage you're installing, how many BTUs you need, uh, depending on whether it's a whole house system. So we could spend an hour just reviewing that application alone. And then the other um, thing that's really a I'm glad to see are still existing, both in Mass Save and Norwood Light for appliances. Some of the appliances and some of the uh, the measures that both uh, Mass Save and Norwood Light incentivize: refrigerators, uh, dehumidifiers, heat pump, water heaters, programmable thermostats, and Wi-Fi uh, or smart thermostats. Norwood uh, offers up to $225 per year per account. Uh, they just have to be Energy Star qualified, as do Mass Save products. Uh, and Mass Save offers, uh, on some of these, up to $160. Uh, and then there's some special discount pricing, depending on whether you want lighting or power strips. There's probably you could double your money with Mass Save. Um, but really, the, the question that is um, that has to be answered is, which program should I be participating in? How do I make that decision. Um, and there are plenty of resources for people to, uh, to tap into. One, of course, is that Energy Advocate. Uh, and also, I've mentioned several other companies, Abode Energy Management, uh, which Norwood Light retains uh, to answer all their heat pump questions. Energy New England, um, they all have qualified, you know, building scientists, uh, home energy raters, uh, that can answer those questions. And again, Norwood is about to, to enter into a program and hire an energy advocate that can answer these questions as well. So I'm going to hit one more slide and then open it up for Q&A. Um, heat pumps, real quickly. Um, a lot of people don't know what they are um, when you say the term. But if you look at these three pictures, standard air can conditioning compressor outside of someone's home, that uses heat pump technology. Your refrigerator, um, heat pump technology has been in use for oh, probably 100 years now in every home in America. Uh, it's just a compression and expansion cycle. It is uh, simple mechanics. Well, maybe they're not so simple, uh, but they can be applied to any number of situations where you want to pump heat from one enclosure to an open source, whether that source is air, whether that source is water, or whether that source is the ground. Those are the three primary heat pump systems that you'll find, air source heat pump, water source heat pumps, and ground source heat pumps. Um, but if you look at your refrigerator, open the doors, it's cold. If you put your hand at the bottom of the refrigerator, it's hot because what the refrigerator is doing, what the heat pump is doing, is taking the heat from inside of that insulated box 
and pumping it to the air that surrounds the, uh, your refrigerator. For heating your home, um, well, let's say for cooling your home, it's very easy to just take all of the heat inside your home and pump it outside. In the heating cycle, there's plenty of uh, heat, plenty of energy in the outside air, even on a cold day, you know, 30, 40 degree day, even down to five degrees. Now there's plenty of, you know, we know what sensible heat is. We walk into a room, it's 80 degrees, it's hot. We can feel it, we can sense that. There's also latent heat, that which is embodied in the air molecules and the air themselves that the technology of heat pumps as it has evolved over the last 20 or 30 years can take that energy and harness it and pump it into your house. That's how heat pumps work, which is moving from one area uh, to another. And I provided, you know, just a quick analysis of how heat pumps can, um, can impact, you know, both cost and energy. I left out the carbon equation because I didn't have enough room. But if you have, let's take just for a simple example, a little bit of building science, a little bit of math, and then I'll be through for the night. If you have a boiler in your house and you live in, let's say, an Eversource service territory, say you, you live in Dedham or Walpole, uh, if you need to put 100,000 BTUs or KBTUs of energy into your house to keep it warm during the year, so that's how much you need to deliver through your heating system, um, and you have an efficiency rating, or if you have a, a burner that's old, say 80% of the fuel that you feed it actually makes it into your house. AFU is uh, annual fuel utilization efficiency. Um, I would say that most people, if you have a, a boiler or a furnace that's been installed in the last 10 or 15 years, you're probably in the 90 percentile, 90, 92, 96% AFUE. If you have, as I've seen, and as I did have years and years ago, a 40-year-old furnace or boiler, you're probably down around 60 or 70% um, efficiency, which means for every dollar you spend bringing energy into your house, you know, 30, 20, 30% 30 of that is going up the chimney. You're not being able to use that. So when I say heating load at 100,000 and I look at the efficiency rating, you actually need to buy 125,000 BTUs, KBTUs of energy in order to get that 100,000 into your house. It's simple math. This is my system efficiency. This is how much energy I need in the house. This is how much energy I have to bring uh, I have to buy. So if you convert BTUs to therms, uh, a native unit, and you multiply it by the cost of typical cost of gas the last few years from National Grid, all in, meaning both uh, buying the gas and the delivery charges is about $1.67 a therm. Um, you're paying over $2,000 a year. If you switch to an air source heat pump, same house, you still need 100,000 BTUs, if you have a coefficient of performance, which is one of the many metrics that heat pumps use to rate their efficiency level, the coefficient means more than 100, that's actually 310% efficiency. Again, we talked about heat pumps going out and harvesting free energy uh, and moving it from open spaces to closed spaces or closed spaces to open spaces. So when you have 300% efficiency, you don't need to buy 100,000 um, KBTUs of energy. You only need to buy 32, almost 33,000. And if you convert that over to the amount of kilowatt hours that you need, again, converting uh, BTUs to native units, kilowatts, um, you need about 945. And if you're paying utility rates that ever source and national grid charge, you're actually going to be buying more energy, spending more money to heat your house to the tune of about $200 a year. So when I say it's good to live in Norwood and have a heat pump, if you look at the numbers below, it's the exact same equation. The only thing that's changed is that Norwood charges 18 cents a kilowatt hour on average. It's actually about 17.5, yeah, 17.56. You're making money. You're saving $425 a year. 
again, those numbers change. You could have a very old system. You could be buying fuel oil. Um, we all realize that energy prices are going to start skyrocketing pretty soon because of the unfortunate events over uh, in the Ukraine. But even in God, God willing, they get resolved quickly. Um, energy prices have always escalated at historically at about one and a half percent per year. So at some point in time, if you have to upgrade <clears throat> your home heating system, your hot water system, and you live in Norwood, if you're not thinking about electrifying, you're leaving long-term savings on the table. Um, and I can tell you that there are a number of resources here that I want to add to over the coming years. You can plug into the Mass Safe program, find out all that they need, uh, all that you need to know. You can go to the Norwood Light uh, web page and find out as much about efficiency as you can. More importantly is we do have program and technical support. Community first partnership is going to be a game changer for, for Norwood and surrounding communities. Um, and we do have a website coming soon. MassSave is also dumping a lot of money into a heat pump support hotline. A lot of training videos, uh, a lot of hand holding, probably by the same companies that are providing it for, uh, for Norwood right now. I know Abode is involved with Community First Partnership Program on some level. Um, so there are plenty of resources for, uh, for all of us to tap into. One thing I didn't get to tonight, and I'm aware that we're pushing, uh, pushing an hour now, is that there's finance options available uh, on a commercial side, uh, or if you own a, a multifamily building in Norwood, Norwood uh, the town of Norwood enacted a uh, commercial PACE finance program. And I can send you some information on that, or you can take a leap, uh, uh, take a look on the, on that link. Uh, and it provides uh, very favorable finance options for property owners who want to transfer that debt to the, uh, really to the utility meter. So PACE stands for physically assessed clean energy. If you sell the property, that note, that efficiency upgrade stays with that property. And the new owner who's going to benefit from those upgrades also takes on the responsibility of paying off that loan. And then there's the Mass Save Heat Loan Program. Depending on your income level, you could qualify up to uh, you know 100% and zero financing for energy upgrades. So with that, I'm going to just say, uh, any questions? I'm going to stop talking unless you ask me one. So Heath, can we open up the lines? Uh, yes. So everybody should be able to go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, we Again, we do have a... Oh, here we go. Janet, go ahead. Oh, so I had a question um, about um, installing a heat pump. Um, can, you, can you have a, a heat pump installed if you currently use baseboard heat um, with forced hot water, or do you need to have duct work already in your house to make that um, the heating system work? So to, to qualify for these incentives, you're gonna have to abandon the, um, chances are you're gonna have to abandon the, the baseboard heat, the existing okay. system. There were two types of, um, of air source or, or heat pump delivery systems. One is known as a ductless mini split, split um, and the other is a ducted mini split. So you can put ducts in the house or you uh, or not. So I ran my system, I'm turning over my shoulder to see a, 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 a ductless mini split on the wall in my office. Um, in hindsight, I think I might have put a ducted system in my second floor, which is relatively small. And then individual units. I had two units um, on my on my um, first floor, so there are many ways to go. You don't have to install ducts. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anyone else? No. All right. <clears throat> Well, we're up against eight o'clock. So uh, David, we, yeah, we do have one more question that's come in now. Uh, will rebates help with the cost of installing ducts? 
Will they? Um, no, not really. Uh, they will be factored into the total uh, project cost. Um, if you are using ducts, unfortunately, there are heat losses <clears throat> in inducted systems. So you might need a larger system and therefore you'd qualify for more of an incentive. Um, so it's my understanding of how the programs are working. I see a uh, question here. So someone's asking about, about emailing the presentation. Yeah. I'm thinking that will happen. Yeah, um, so after, a few days after uh, we wrap here, uh, we usually do some light video editing just to make sure that everything is in order. And we'll email out the recording. Um, and Dave, David, if you are willing to um, share your presentation, I can also email that uh, in the same email. I think I sent it to you. Um, you should check. And if you don't see it, I'll send it out again. So, but thanks for the reminder. Sure. So, so John, yes, uh, uh, is the answer. All right. Anything else from anyone before I stop talking? Thank you. That was really, it was very informative. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, again, I put my contact information up on the last slide that will be available and going out. Uh, you can reach me at the town hall as well. Um, I'm starting to post on the town website um, some interesting information. Uh, and I'll end with the way I began. I hope this is um, the first of many conversations that we have, either as a group or as individuals. I have been helping a number of people around town uh, with some heat pump uh, installations, or at least analyzing their energy data and, and preparation. Um, hopefully, that will be the, en the uh, energy advocate's job shortly. Um, but we're moving forward. Norwood's in a good position. Um, so thank you all for joining, and um, thank you for caring. Have a good night. And thank yes, uh, thank you uh, to David, and thank you again to everyone for coming, and have, a, have an excellent night, as David said. Thank you, Heath. So long. Now.